Hey guys, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at and covering the AP discovery and join process for access points joining a wireless LAN controller. This video forms part of the CCMP Enterprise Core Exam Series 350-401. The exam topic covered as part of this video is 3.3c, which is to describe access point discovery and join processes. So as you can tell from the exam topic, there are two phases that must be completed before an access point can join a wireless LAN controller. These are the discovery phase and the join phase. In order for the access point to join a wireless controller, it must connect to the controller via the management interface. The first thing the access point will do when it's powered on is to try and discover as many wireless controllers as possible. The AP can do this without any configuration and can be plugged in straight out of the box discovering controllers. It completes this in the following order. Firstly, the first method the AP uses to discover wireless controllers is to send a layer 3 broadcast on the local subnet. It does this by using the CatWAP discovery message using UDP port 5246. If there are any wireless controllers on the subnet, they will reply with a unicast discovery response to the access point. The next method is to use known locally stored controller IP addresses within the AP. The AP will remember up to 8 previously used wireless LAN controllers and will try and communicate with them to see if they're still active. Thirdly, the AP can discover wireless controllers using a DHCP option. The DHCP option that's used for Cisco access points is option 43. This option is specified in a hex format. The IP address of this option should be the management IP address of the wireless controller you want the AP to join. Next, the AP will try and resolve the following DNS records. Cisco CatWAP controller and Cisco LWAP controller. If there are any records configured for these within DNS, the AP will use the resolved IP address to try and join the wireless controllers. Finally, if there are any manually configured controller IPs on the AP that have been configured via CLI, the AP will attempt to join these controllers also. It's worth noting that during the discovery phase, any controllers discovered will report its load, including the ratio of the amount of access points connected to the controller, compared to the amount of access points the controller can support. Before we proceed, it's also worth noting the AP will use all methods to discover as many wireless controllers as possible before proceeding to the join phase. The discovery phase will not stop as soon as it finds a controller, it will continue discovering until all options have been completed. Once the AP has got a list of controllers it's discovered as part of the discovery phase, the AP will then attempt to join the wireless controllers that is discovered. It's worth noting that the joined phase will only begin if the AP has found at least one controller to attempt to join. If the AP didn't discover any controllers, the discovery phase will start again. As the AP will potentially have a list of controllers it can join, it will prefer a controller as follows. Firstly, if the AP has joined a wireless controller it has discovered before, it will join this. If not, an AP can be configured with a primary, secondary and tertiary controller within its configuration. If this has been configured and a discovered controller is in the configured list, it will attempt to join the controller in the order of primary, secondary and then tertiary. If the AP doesn't find a controller that matches the criteria from step 1, the AP will connect to a controller that has been configured as the master controller. This can be configured on a wireless LAN controller, as shown on the screen now. First of all, we'll connect to the controller and go to Advanced. From here, we'll then go to Controller and then Advanced. Here, we'll select Master Control Mode. If this is enabled, the controller will be set as a master controller. Lastly, step 3. If the AP doesn't find a controller in its list that's been configured as a primary, secondary or tertiary in its configuration, a controller it's joined before, or found a controller with the master controller mode enabled, it will attempt to join the wireless LAN controller with the least amount of APs associated. It will do this to attempt to load balance the APs to avoid all the APs connecting to one controller, causing a single point of failure. The AP will determine the least loaded wireless controller using the reported information from the discovery phase we discussed earlier. Finally, when our AP has found a controller it wants to connect to, it will connect to it using a CatWAP join request, and then wait for a CatWAP join response from the wireless controller. When the AP sends a CatWAP join request to the wireless controller, it will contain the following information. The hardware of the AP, the software on the AP, 
the name of the AP, the amount and type of radios inside the AP, and the certificate payload. In addition to this, when the controller responds to the join request from our access point, it will respond with the following information. The name of the controller, the model of the controller, the amount of APs the controller supports, the amount of APs currently connected to the controller, if the master controller setting has been enabled, the AP manager IP address, and the certificate payload. To show you this, I have an AP I currently have connected to my wireless controller in my lab. To show you the CatWap join process, I'll reload the AP now and speed up the boot process. Now the AP is booted, you can see that the AP is trying to discover wireless controllers using the methods we discussed. Even though our AP had connected to a controller, it still completes the discovery process. Once that phase has been completed, we can see our DTLS connection request to our wireless controller on UDP port 5246. We then see that we receive a join request back from the controller and the AP will join the controller. A few seconds later, we can see here the AP has now joined our wireless controller. We can prove this by connecting to our wireless controller and logging in. From here, we'll go to advanced and then wireless at the top. We can see in here now that our AP is connected to our controller and is ready to be configured. Now you've seen the AP join the wireless controller, there's a few things to note regarding the steps the AP will complete once it selects a controller. Firstly, it will check its firmware against that of the controller. If there is a mismatch, the AP will download the firmware from the controller and reload to boot the image. Secondly, the AP will check its configuration against that on the wireless controller. If there is a mismatch, the AP will download the latest configuration. And finally, once both of these checks have been completed, the AP will register with the wireless controller. And there we have it. That's a complete overview of how our APs discover wireless LAN controllers to join and the process in which they attempt to join them. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments. Apart from that, remember to subscribe and like the video for more CCMP Enterprise videos. I hope you've enjoyed and I'll catch you next time.